This morning we're going to go over the 1005C. The 1005C is going to be over the basic components of the refrigeration system and it's also going to cover a little bit about some of the terminology that you will need to know from this point on. Okay, we covered some things in our last lecture, uh, some terms, but I want to go over a little bit about those right now because they're very, very important to understand and to use in our lecture today. BTU. You always recall what a BTU is. British Thermal Unit. It takes one BTU to uh, increase the temperature of one pound of water one degree. Another is latent heat. Latent heat is the hidden heat. Is it, it, You can see it work, but you can't feel it work. It's a change of the state of a substance. It's like, what, what that means? Ice to water, or water to steam. That's a latent heat process. The temperature doesn't change, but the state of the material does. Okay, another one is sensible heat. Sensible heat is what you can measure with a thermometer, and that's an increase in temperature, sensible. And last but not least, specific heat. Specific heat is how much or how many BTUs it takes to change one pound of an object one degree, or substance one degree. Okay, I said that was it. Let me add some more since, I, since, since, since I'm not through there. Uh, conduction and convection and radiation, that's the way heat moves, okay? Things don't get cold. <clears throat> they lose their heat. Okay? We can't make cold. All we can do is move the heat from one place to another or remove the heat from it by letting that heat go to another place. Uh, heat moves in three different manners. It moves by conduction. It moves by convection. And last but not least, it moves by radiation. Let's talk about conduction. That's a pretty easy one to understand. If I have a piece of pipe and I get you to hold the end of it while I put a torch on the other end of it and heat it up, I'm not aiming that heat at you, but eventually you're going to let go of that piece of pipe because the heat travels from molecule to molecule through that, that pipe until it reaches you. That's called conduction. Okay? Let's go to the radiation. I think radiation is pretty easy to understand. We, we go out on a sunny day and, we, and we're standing there in the sun, we're going to get warm. Okay? Uh, it doesn't have to move through the molecules. It moves by waves. The heat's moving by waves. That's how, that's, that's how the sun heats us up. The last way is through convection. Now, convection is a little harder to understand. Convection is where a substance is heated up that heats another substance. Okay, it's like this. If I have a heater by the outside wall, how in the world does that heater heat this side of the room? Okay, it heats up the air, and then the air heats up this side of the room. Okay, your air conditioning units that use a fan, that's a convection type unit. Okay, all right. With that understood, let's let's talk about a little bit of other stuff. Um, the word ambient. In this field, you're going to have folks to come up and say, "Hey, what's the ambient?" Well, we normally think when somebody says that they're talking about the outside air, but that's not the case. Ambient means surrounding. If you were working on a unit that was inside of a building, for example, let's say that you're, you're in a grocery store and you have a uh, refrigeration unit inside that grocery store, maybe a, maybe a little ice cream cooler or, or, or green cooler, well, it's not worried about what the outside temperature is, it's worried about what that temperature around that object is. So when you hear the word ambient, don't always assume that it means outside temperature, okay? I know those uh, seem like simple things, but you're going to be exposed to some of those problems as we go through here. Uh, <clears throat> let's get on to the actual components of the refrigeration system. First of all, 
talked about why we used the latent heat process the other day. It doesn't matter whether it's a 2,000 ton unit or a water cooler. This refrigerant flow and the components, the basic components are going to be the same. It doesn't matter. So the bottom line is, is you've got to understand the operation and know what the basic components are to build or troubleshoot these things or do anything with them. And here's the funny thing about it is, it doesn't matter whether you're installing, repairing. I got a question for you. If I don't know how it's supposed to work, how do I know it's working right? Okay. If I go out and I, I install something, but I don't have any idea what it's really supposed to do, when I get through with the job, how do I know I'm really through? If I go out there and I want to repair a unit, and I'm not real sure on what it's really supposed to be doing, I don't think I got a chance at ever getting it right. Maybe I do, but not likely. Okay, y'all see my point here. All right, in this field, there's a lot of people that install and repair every day that have no clue how it works. That sounds kind of strange, don't it? Well, I'm glad you're here because that tells me that you want to do it right. Okay. All right, let's start off with what the system is. The system is nothing in the world but something that can move heat from one place to another. You know, we, I said we don't make coal. All we're going to do is move the heat, the heat from a place that we don't want it to a place that it doesn't matter. All right? Let's take this unit in here. We're taking the heat out of here and then we're moving it to the outside. Refrigeration does the same thing. Air conditioning is refrigeration. All right? A lot of people like to break air conditioning and put it over here, refrigeration over there, and make it sound like it's two separate things. Air conditioning is a type of refrigeration. All right, I've gone through a little bit about the description of what it does. Now let's talk about how it does it and what the components that, that uh, make it work. The compressor. <clears throat> the compressor is the heart of the system. It is a vapor pump. I want you to keep that in mind. It's a vapor pump. All right? What it does is it takes a low pressure vapor and compresses it to a high pressure vapor. Okay? There's the seven basic components, and as we go through here, we'll point them out. The number one is the compressor. Okay? That gas, high pressure gas, goes into what's called a discharge line. The discharge line connects the compressor to the condenser. Okay? We're going to go through this several times, so if you don't get it this first time around, don't worry about it. We're going to keep going through it till we do. Alright? In the condenser, there are several things that take place, but for right now, let's say that the condenser is the point that we reject the heat from the system. That's exactly what it is. It's a heat exchanger. Okay? From the condenser, we, we go into what's called the liquid line. The liquid line connects the condenser to the metering device. So far I've described components that are on the high side. Now the compressor and the metering device are on both sides. They share both the high and low side. The metering device is a throttle. It's a restriction. It meters the amount of refrigerant going into the evaporator. Okay. The evaporator is another heat exchanger. It's the point where it picks up the heat from whatever the product or the air or whatever we're trying to get, remove the heat from. From the evaporator, it goes into the suction line. The <coughs> suction line connects the evaporator back to the compressor. That's where we start. Back to the compressor. It's a cycle. So the components are the compressor, discharge line, condenser, liquid line, metering device, evaporator, and suction line. 